Hey, hey, it's Matt King again, and today I'm coming to you with a Kodak camera review. I've had a lot of questions from a lot of different people wanting to know more about cameras and wanting to know, you know, a little bit more. When I say flip camera or Kodak camera, they want to go a little more in depth as opposed to, hey, go buy a flip camera or, hey, go buy a Kodak camera. So, here I am with a Kodak camera review. Okay, disclaimer time. This is only a personal review video, and I'm about to review and compare the different cameras in the Kodak Pocket Digital Camera family so that you can make the best decision to buy a new camera. Now, when looking at these cameras, these are the most important aspects to look for, and I'll point them out as I review. First of all, the size of the image sensor, what an image sensor is, where you can find it, and why it needs to be bigger as opposed to smaller. The battery life, which ones have a good battery life and how long are they gonna last? Rechargeable versus non-rechargeable, which ones uh, which ones have which and which one's better? I'll talk about that. Lens quality, what is a, a good quality lens? How can you tell if it's a good quality lens and why would you need it? A megapixel, what is a megapixel and what is a good range of megapixels to have? Internal versus external microphone. I'll tell you right now, they all have internal microphones, but some of them have the option to have an external microphone. So I'll tell you which ones have that option. And last but not least, we'll talk about special effects. Which ones have uh, the possibility to get uh, special effects internally or externally. So without further ado, let's get started on this. All right, let's look at the Kodak page. This is Kodak digital video camera page. There's actually eight different cameras that you could actually choose from. However, we are going to look at and compare just a few of the models. We're not going to look at them all just because it would take quite a while to look at them. And then, you know, by the time we look at them all, you're just flat out going to be confused. So we're just going to look at the Playtouch video camera, the ZI-8, the ZI-6, and the ZXD pocket video. And look at that. You can see them all in one shot. All right, the Playtouch. We're looking at a bigger screen. A bigger screen is okay. And... Quite honestly, you don't really need a bigger screen. What your most important factor is, is what the output looks like when you're done with it. It doesn't matter if it's 2 inches or 3 inches. As long as you can see an image in that viewfinder when you look at it, then you should be able to create a good image. You should be able to frame it up and make a good shot. Now, what we are going to look at here is the, the resolution of these different cameras. Uh, with the Play Touch and the ZI8, you're looking at a camera that can create HD quality, 19 by 20. I'm sorry, 1920 by 1080, which is right now pretty much the max HD quality video that you're going to get, and you get that with both of the top two cameras. Now, when you start going downward towards the ZI6 and the ZXD, you're going to find that these ones go down to they're still HD, so they're still good, but they're going to give you a lesser quality video. Uh, probably if you're not planning on making really something huge, you could probably go with these. But remember uh, to think long term if you're in business. Um, you know, think about what's going on in the future. Let's look at the cards. These all have removable media SD cards. There's SDs, there's XDs, there's uh, smart cards. There's all kinds of different removable media that come in different sizes. Uh, one gigabyte, two gigabytes, four, 16, even more than that. So right now we're just looking at these and we can see that they all have removable media and that they're SD. So when you go looking for one of these cameras, you might want to pick up an SD card because most of them don't come with one. Now let's look at these capabilities. Macro, close-up mode. If you're going to shoot something close up, these three models will have a macro capability which means you can get close to your subject, normally within about 15 centimeters. Weather resistant, all of these ones uh, say that they are not weather resistant, and that's probably just due to the way that they are made. It does not make them a bad camera. However, for whatever reason, they decided to make the ZXD weather resistant. Uh, I'm going to put a caveat on that. That does not mean that you can immerse it underwater without putting it in an underwater casing. It just means that if you're out in the elements, probably going to have a better chance of it staying, um, uh, you know, staying in good condition. Uh, all of these, with the exception of the ZI-6, which is odd now that I'm looking at it, has an HDMI port. All that is is one of the new, um, 
one of the new high definition cables. They're normally about twenty to thirty bucks just to get a little cable, but uh, I've had a, a camera that I haven't I've never used the HDMI port. Uh, all it's good for is outputting your video directly to a TV, an HD TV, so that you can watch your footage. Maybe that's what you want to do. I'm not saying that it isn't, but if you would like to do that, make sure that you get one uh, that does have an HDMI port on it. Uh, and normally they're mini HDMI ports, not the full-size ones. All right, USB. All of these will transfer footage from the computer, or I'm sorry, from the camera to a computer via USB. That's pretty much how they're going to work. A lot, a lot of the bigger, more expensive cameras have uh, FireWire. That's not the case with these. You're going to transfer your videos with a USB. And most of these files, as I'll show you later, um, they'll be exported in an MOV format that's to be used with QuickTime. All right. Remote control, I wouldn't even worry about all that stuff. Uh, it's optional. There are accessories that you can pick up for these. And the battery that comes with all of these are going to be lithium-ion rechargeables. Actually, I take that back. Uh, the, the lower end ones here look like they take uh, nickel metal hydride, which is not as good as the lithium-ion. I'm going to point that out just because uh, I'm familiar with these batteries. They're not bad. They just, they just don't last as long, I guess is the best way to say it. Uh, let me look. I'm going to compare these top two real quick. Uh, one thing I want to point out with the play touch, besides the cool color schemes that you can get, uh, you can get it in red there, is the fact that you can add different color schemes, black and white, sepia tones, different uh, different resolutions. You can change the sharpness, add a film look. You can do all kinds of cool look uh, to these to the film before you've before you've shot it or even after you've shot it, you can add these effects. Now, let's go back one. We are going to look at the ZI-8. All right. So you can get different color schemes on this one too. I'll pop up a little raspberry look here. This one does not. It's about $20 cheaper generally. And uh, from what I can tell, a lot of them are on sale for $129 right now. You can't get a better deal than that on one of these cameras. So uh, we're going to look into this one, the specifications on this one. Uh, and like I said, this one does not have those cool uh, black and white and sepia looks and all that. But you can do that in post-production anyway. You don't need to do it on the camera, which is uh, why I like this one. Now, the sensor type is almost half an inch, and it's a 5, me five megapixel CMOS. That is an image sensing chip that is behind that lens so that you can actually start up your camera and shoot the best possible imagery. Very cool. Uh, don't worry about the lens. They're all pretty much going to be the same, and to be honest, they're, they're not going to change that much. Um, they're not the greatest lenses in the world, but they will get you a good enough, high-quality, high-definition image that you can use in pretty much anywhere, and nobody's going to be able to tell the difference. Don't worry about the zoom. Uh, the display size of 2.5 inches, I know it's a little bit smaller than the Play Touch, but it's still good. Now here I want to point this out. 128 megabyte internal memory storage. You can, if you run out of space on your removable media SD card, it also takes an SDHC, which uh, is probably just the smaller version. And what you can do is just record on that internal memory chip. But 128 megabytes isn't going to get you very much. So just keep that in mind. Be sure to get your extra extra expansion slot cards. Do, do, do. Where are we at? File formats, video H.264. It exports in an MOV and an AAC audio format, which is what you need for the internet. And you can also change the capture settings to uh, to reflect these, which is 1920 by 1080. If you want to, if you want more record space, record time, you can actually change the resolutions. If you don't need it to be this high quality, that's really high quality. Uh, unless you're making a film, you probably don't even need 1080, but a 720 is definitely cool, definitely good enough. So uh, if you need a little bit more quantity over quality, you can change it to reflect that. If you want quality over quantity, definitely up your standards to the 1080 level. Uh, now, here's something I want to point out is the microphone. Both of these cameras, every camera that you get in the flip style is going to, to have an internal microphone. However, this one 
and the Play Touch have an external microphone jack. This is something that the other ones do not have. So you can plug in an external lavalier microphone via a one, I'm sorry, a one eighth inch uh, industry standard microphone jack, so that you can get pristine audio. Very awesome, very cool. So uh, if you guys want to see more on this, I definitely recommend coming to the Kodak site and checking that out. Let's go back one more. Now I want to point a few things out on the smaller one here, which is the ZXD, and that is this. Uh, this is the cheaper one. This one's like 99 bucks. You know, this one's not on sale, and so definitely for the extra 30 bucks, I'd recommend going with the uh, uh, with the Z ZI8 in that instance. Now, what I'm going to show you here, this one doesn't do any of that all really cool stuff, but for whatever reason, it happens to be weather resistant. Now, let's look at the specifications. Uh, the image sensor is almost half the size of the other one, first of all, and the megapixels is 1.6 for that image sensing, which means you're going to have, uh, in relative comparison to the other two cameras, an absolute junk picture. And for that reason alone, I would recommend that you stay away from this. However, if all you have is $99 in your budget to get a new camera, go with this camera. Buy it if you really need to. Everything else is the same. It still records at a very high quality picture rate. And this one also does not have the external microphone jack. So uh, remember, think long term and, and, you know, make a good wise decision. And on that note, let's go into a quick review. Now you understand how to, uh, how to look for a camera. You know what options to look for. You know to look for microphone jacks. You know to look for a high quality image a high quality image sensor. You know how to how to look for this camera, you know where to go. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, the places that you're going to go and look for these cameras, you can look at Best Buy, you can look at Kmart, uh, Target has these, Radio Shack has these. You can go to a Walmart or a Sam's Club. Uh, you can go to all these places and, and simply ask to see the Kodak flip cameras. They're going to show them to you so that you can make your best decision. I recommend getting out there and holding on to these and seeing which one's best for you. Now on that note, I really need to show you what is my recommendation so that you can get out there and make uh, the best recommendation for you, but based on what, what I think, you know, considering I've been around and done this, and that is that you go out and look at the Kodak ZI8. For the price, you can't get a better camera as far as I am concerned in the Kodak family. Now, the reason I say that is because the Kodak camera has an external microphone jack. You also have removable recording media so that you can take the camera, or I'm sorry, take the uh, take the media out and, and switch media if you need to. You're looking at a pretty high megapixel rate at 5 megapixels and a large CMOS sensor chip. So that's pretty awesome there. Amazing imagery, 1080 by 720. This is an amazing quality uh, video rate. You're also looking at the fact that it's pretty inexpensive and you can and you can record up to 10 hours of record time with this camera. Uh, guys, this is a no-brainer. Go look at this camera. Go find one. Hold on to it. Play around with it and ask to learn more about it while you're out there, okay? This is definitely the place to be. Next time, we will go in-depth into the world of flip cameras. There are three main styles and over eight different kinds that you can get. So, I'm sure which one do you get? I'm sure you're asking. Well, stick around, watch your email box, and I will give you an in-depth look at what you need to know in order to pick up a new flip camera. I'll also tell you which one I recommend when I'm done so you don't have to figure it out yourself, but at least you'll be a lot more knowledgeable about which cameras are the best ones to pick up. And one more thing. Please leave me a comment. I need to know what struggles and, and what challenges that you guys are having in the video world so that I know how to help you and know where to place my time and efforts. Now, take it easy, and I'll see you guys again soon.